Okay, this is the ellipse homework. Um, here we're going to find the center, the vertices, the foci, and for each of these we're going to sketch as we go. So, we've got these problems, and I happen to already have the solutions written out, so here's what we're going to do. Basically, I'm going to show you each problem. I trust you can use the um, pause button if you need to take a longer look at any particular piece. And because I already have them written out, I'm not going to go step by step through every single thing. What I am going to show you are some important features of each problem. So, let's look at number one. Okay, so the first thing you might notice here is you have the same number on the bottom of this fraction and that fraction. So essentially what we have here, um, this is also already in general form for an ellipse, Essentially what we have here is actually a circle. So, if we have the same value for A and for B, then rather than having a stretched out ellipse, we have the same stretch in the X and the Y direction, therefore it's a circle. So, you can work it out as an ellipse, or you could multiply through by 16 and work it out just like it was a circle problem. Okay. Uh, since this is the ellipse section, I worked it out as an ellipse. And so, of course, we'll have the center at 0, 0, and then A and B are both going to be 4. It doesn't really matter which one you call which, they're both 4. Now, um, one interesting feature of a circle, if you work it out as, a, as an ellipse problem, is you'll find that the foci actually both end up being in the center because we're going to get a value for C that is 0. So both of the foci are actually in the center. That's always going to be the case for a circle, even if you work it out as an ellipse. So it can work either way. Let's look at number 2. Okay. So on number 2, you notice we have a right shift of 3, a left shift, sorry, a, an up shift of 6, so we're going to have a, a center at 3, 6, and then A is 5, B is 2. Since the bigger number is under the Y value, it's a tall ellipse. That means we're going to count up and down 5, right and left 2, to get our vertices. And then to find the foci, we solve for C, A squared minus B squared equals C squared, end up with the square root of 21, which is about 4 and a half. And so we count in the direction of the major axis up and down four and a half and plot the foci. On a lot of these problems the foci are going to be very close to the vertices so even if I don't label them if you see a couple of extra dots right inside the edges of the um, ellipse those are the foci. Let's look at number three. Okay. So on number 3, we've got a shift to the left of 7 and a shift up of 5. That means we have our center at negative 7, 5, right over there. And so, let's look at the bottom numbers. We've got B and A. A is going to be 3. Again, A comes from whichever number is bigger on the bottom. Take the square root. So the square root of 9 is 3. That's A. The square root of 1 is 1. That is B. And so we count up and down 3 because A came from underneath the Y value, the vertical one. So up and down 3 and then we count left and right 1 to get our vertices. So here they are written in that fun notation that everybody likes so much. And to find the focus or the foci we need to know what C is so we solve this equation A squared minus B squared equals C squared and we end up with the square root of 8. And again count in the direction of the major axis in this case, because it's a tall parabola, the major axis is up and down. Let's look at number four. Now, with number four, we run into our first problem that is not written in standard form for us. So, a good first step, we're going to start by dividing everything by 225. Divide by 225, divide by 225, divide by 225. And when we do that, we want to reduce all of these fractions. Remember, we can't leave our equation with numbers 
on top of the fractions in front of the x and the y. So we divide all of these by 225. 9 over 225 reduces to 1 25th. 25 over 225 reduces to 1 ninth. And 225 over 225 reduces to 1, of course. So we end up with this is our equation. Again, the bigger number gives us a, take the square root, and we get 5. The square root of 9 is 3, we'll use that as b, the center. In this case, because we don't have any horizontal or vertical shift, that would be in the parentheses with the x or the y. Our center is at 0, 0. And so we count in the major direction. That would, that would be the x direction here because it's got the bigger number out 5, so left and right 5, up and down 3. And we get our vertices there. And then solve for c, a squared minus b squared equals c squared, and we get 4 for c. So our focus is going to be to the right 4 and to the left 4. Okay, number 5. Here it is. So in this case, um, we're going to do the same thing basically that we did on the last problem. Start by trying to get a 1 on the right hand side of the equation so that we will have it in standard ellipse form. So to do that we divide by 4, divide by divide everything by 4 so we get 1. Here the 4 is going to stay on the bottom and then for the x's 4 over 4 those will cancel out and just leave you with x plus 2 squared. I'm going to write it over 1 just as a visual aid so that it looks um, so that I see what my b value is. So. The center is going to be, this is left 2 and up 5, so at negative 2, 5. A is the square root of 4, which is 2. B is the square root of 1, which is 1. Again, big numbers A, little numbers B. And so, all this stuff happens. Uh, same as the last time, it's going to be a tall ellipse because the y value has A underneath it. The y value has the bigger stretch. Solve for C to get the foci, it's the square root of 3, and we're going to count up and down again because that's our major axis. Okay, let's try number 6. Number 6, again, this one is basically like the last two problems. I don't really have anything new to say about it, so there it is. Okay, that was fun. Let's look at number 7 now. Okay. So for number 7, again, we're going to start by dividing by 9. Because for an ellipse to be in standard form, we need to have a 1 on the right-hand side of the equation. To do that, we need to divide by 9. So let's see what happens here. This one's going to look a little bit different. So we start by dividing everything by 9. 9 divided by 9. 1. Um, for the x's, there's nothing, there's no number in front of the x's, and so just treat that like a, like a 1. So it's 1 over 9, which does not reduce. We get a 9 on the bottom. Now here's where we have to do a little bit of fraction work. So we have 4 times y plus 3 squared. When we divide that by 9, of course, 4 ninths doesn't cancel out like it would have on the problems before. We saw all, all of those top numbers cancel out with the bottom numbers, or at least reduce. Here, it doesn't happen, but we can't just leave the 4 up there, even though it didn't reduce away. What we need to do is move it to the bottom. The way we do that is by moving it all the way to the bottom. Or in other words, we're going to take this 4 ninths that I circled here, flip it upside down, and write it on the bottom as 9 fourths. If you didn't catch my explanation of that in class, it works, I promise. Okay, um, so the center, again, this is left 1 and down 3, so it's at negative 1, negative 3. And then these two bottom numbers are going to be a, a squared and b squared. The bigger one will be a squared, so we take the square root of 9 to get a, that's 3. And then to get b, we need to take the square root of 9 fourths. Remember, when you're taking a square root of a fraction, take the square root of the top and the square root of the bottom. So the square root of 9 is 
3, the square root of 4 is 2, so b will be 3 over 2. So, since a is in the x direction, we're going to count left and right by 3. So left 3, right 3. And then we're going to count up and down by b, because that's underneath the y. So count up 3 over 2, which is of course 1 and a half, and down 3 over 2. And then for the foci, um, when we square each of these, so we square 3 and of course get 9, we square 3 over 2 and of course square the top and the bottom and you should end up with whatever number you had up here because that was already b squared. So that value for b squared is 9 fourths. It's just this number minus that number. And of course when we're subtracting two numbers and one of them is a fraction, it helps to make them both fractions. So this is 9 over 1, but we want to give it a common denominator. We want to give it a denominator of 4. So remember, you need to multiply the top number by 4 if you're going to multiply the bottom number by 4. So that's 36 fourths. So we write it in fourths, and then once it's in a common denominator, to subtract those, keep the 4. So keep that denominator the same. It's going to go on the bottom, and then subtract the numbers on top. So 36 minus 9 is 27. And there it is. Uh, so it's the square root of 27 over 4, and remember you can actually take the square root not of the top, but of the bottom, and so I rewrote it down here as the square root of 27 divided by just 2. Not the square root of 2, but just a 2, like so. And because the major axis is in the, is in the x direction, we're going to count right and left in the x direction by that value for c to find each focus. So there we have it. Number eight. So, I give you a little hint here. Um, we're going to need to use completing the square to put this equation into general form. That's the one where we, you know, leave a square. So, let's zoom in on that and see how it happens. Move that down a little bit. Okay. So we start off with this equation. So the first thing we want to do is take this nine and move it across to the other side. So to do that, we'll subtract. So this is step one in completing the square. If you wrote the steps down when we took notes over it, this would be step one where it says move C to make a hole. So here's our constant value. Subtract it over to the other side. That's where this negative nine comes from. When we do that, we're going to leave behind a hole. Now in this case, because we actually have x's and y's, we're going to leave behind two holes. So what I did here, you might recall from the lesson, is we're going to take the x's, we're going to put them together inside these parentheses, so the 9x squared and the 18x, and we're going to leave a hole for the x's. We're also going to put the y's together, y squared minus 6y, we're going to take those, put them in a set of parentheses, and leave a separate hole for the y's. So all we did here is rearrange the left-hand side and leave a couple of holes. We haven't actually changed the value by doing that. Now, we move down to the next step, uh, which is factor out whatever value a is. So that means here we've got to factor out a 9. So we factor that out, and we are left behind x squared plus 2x. Now this would still be a hole here. The next step would be to take this value for b, that's the 2, cut it in half and bring it down, that's the 1, and then square it, and that's where this 1 comes from. So the, remember that comes in after we have already factored out the 9. So factor that out, then take this b value, cut it in half, and then square it to put it in the hole. That steps 3, I don't know, 2, two 3, and 4, yeah. All happening rather quickly right there. We'll do the same thing for the y's. But since there's not a value for a, um, we assume it's a 1. And factoring out a 1 really accomplishes nothing. So we skip that step. And we take the b value, cut it in half. That's negative 3. Make sure you keep the negative sign with it. And then square that value. That's where this 9 comes from. And we can't just go adding numbers to the left side of the equation without balancing it on the right side of the equation. So remember, when we put a plus 1 here, that 1 is actually multiplied by 9, so we're really adding, value-wise, we're adding 9 there. 
So that's where this plus 9 comes from, and then plus 9 here. This isn't multiplied by anything, so it actually is a plus 9. So value-wise, we added 9 over here and 9 there. So we need to add those together, and two of those will cancel out, and we end up with 9 again. It just works out that way. Okay, um, now the last step of completing the square we need to factor. And so remember, it's always going to factor as x plus or minus something squared and y plus or minus something squared. And whatever that something is, is going to come, again, from this value right here. So this 1. It's positive, so we bring it down into that factor, and it's a plus 1. And of course, don't forget to bring the 9 down as well. For the y's, we steal this negative 3. We bring it down into our factor, so that's y minus 3. And yes, that's just a scratch out. It's not any mathematical symbol. And those are both squared. So we get this, and we're almost in uh, the correct general form of the equation, but we need to have a 1 over here, and we don't want to have a 9 on top of our fraction. So divide through by 9, and we end up with 1 equals y minus 3 squared over 9 plus x plus 1 squared. And again, I'm going to put this divided by 1 here just because my eyes like to see the equation written like that so I can see what my a and my b are. So let me scoot this up a little bit. Here. Um, center, negative 1, 3. a, which is in the y direction, is 3. b is 1, so we count up and down 3. Left and right, 1. And then solve for c. And then the focus is going to be in the direction of the major axis. Okay. So all that stuff is the same as all of the other problems that we've looked at. Now we'll move on to number 9. So number 9, again on this one we have to complete the square. And so I'll go through this a little bit more quickly. Um, so first we move the 71 over and add it. Then we rearrange the left hand side put our x's and our y's together, leave a square for each one. Now we factor out a for the x's and for the y's. Here, for the x's, that's a 9, so that leaves behind x squared minus 2x plus blank. And over here, that's a 16, so we factor out that 16, that leaves behind y squared minus 4y plus blank. Then to fill in that blank, we cut this number in half, cut the negative 2 in half, it's negative 1, then square it. Cut the negative 4 in half, and square it. And that's how I fill in that hole. And remember, when you add a plus 1 here, you have to add the corresponding value on the right-hand side. This is 1 times 9, so it's actually adding 9. This is 4 times 16, so we're actually adding 64 to each side. So add those up, and it's 144. And we end up with this equation right here. So to get it into general form, we're going to divide by 144 all the way across. Um, each of those fractions in this case is going to reduce like so. So we end up with this equation. Now our center is at 1, 2. A is in the x direction, so it's a wide ellipse. A is 4, square root. B is 3, square root. And C is the square root of 7. Oh, hey. And C is the square root of 7, right there. And so, again, the foci are going to be in the major direction, which is the x direction, because that's where the bigger number is on the bottom. So it's a wide ellipse. So there are the foci. In this case, not that close to the edge. So that's number 9. And there's one more. Number 10, of course. So, let me look at the problem first. For number 10... So what I refer to as P um, when I work this out is either this point on the outer edge of the ellipse or this point. It doesn't really matter. So the point here is that um, the distance from one focus to some point on the edge to the other focus is always the same. So this is why um, I made volunteers help me draw an ellipse with a string on the board for those of you who are in class. So focus one to the outer rim to focus two. 
that distance is always the same regardless of where the point is you go to. So we can go to this point. The distance will be the same as we go from focus to this point to focus right here. Okay? So this isn't supposed to be like a parallelogram necessarily. Um, the distance is just always the same from here to there to there. So that's how we set the problem up. So what we're going to say is that the total distance from focus 1 to focus 2, so one way it would be x plus 2x, should equal 2x plus 1 plus 3. So that's going to be our equation. So let's start there. So again, we're saying those two distances are equal to each other. That's from the focus to the point, and then from the point to the other focus, regardless of which path you take. So those two paths are equal to each other. So I set up an equation and solve for x. So combine like terms, that's 3x, that's 2x plus 4. And then we get x equals 4. So subtract the 2x over, that leaves you with just x. So x equals 4. Now, to find a, you want to recall that the total distance from focus to point and then from point to focus is always equal to 2a, specifically. So if we want to know what a is, we're going to take that x value that we just found, plug it into either equation, it does, into either distance, it doesn't matter which distance, just take one path or the other. So I used 2x plus 1 plus 3. That was the lower path. You could also use the other path. So we we use that distance, plug in 4 for x because that's what we found, set it equal to 2a, and we're going to solve for a. So that's 8, 9, 12, divide by 2, a equals 6. And we're done. So if you have any questions, um, talk to me at the beginning of class. We're going to have a quiz on this in the next class period, whenever that is for you. So look over the stuff, be ready, and... Have a great rest of your weekend, or possibly really late Monday night.